<laughs> Skeet and Hemingway. They are. Welcome, Maura. Oh, no. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so glad you're here. You know, my whole segment, Living Richly, um, is is about having a full, wealthy, authentic life. And, um, you know, I know that my pets have been part of that for me. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about how pets enrich our lives. Um, so I, I thought we would talk a little bit about that. I found some interesting information, believe it or not, from the CDC. Great. Um, that says that pets can decrease your blood pressure, your cholesterol levels, your triglyceride levels, your feelings of loneliness. They can increase your opportunities for exercise and outdoor activities and opportunities for socialization. Absolutely. Um, so I thought that was really, really, and it's the CDC. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the CDC is putting this stuff out, you know that's oh, yeah. a good thing. No, pets are important for your health. They really are. Absolutely. And I also noticed that more than half, this is from the National Institutes of Health, more than half of all U.S. households have a companion animal. Pets are more common in households with children, yet there are more pets than children in American households. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? That is, yeah, that's amazing. Love that. That's Love cool. Love that. <laughs> so, um, and also, you know, talking about health, um, in 1792, animals were incorporated into the treatment for mental patients at the York Retreat, England, as part of an enlightened approach attempting to reduce the use of harsh drugs and restraints. And they just continued to come into our system today. Absolutely. I didn't know it was that early. Yeah. Wow. I'll tell you what, I'm up on my research. That's awesome. I was up yeah. late last night. Had oh, a little cool. glass of wine and <laughs> and did that. So let's let's talk a little bit about the SPCA. It's one of my sure. favorite, favorite things. And my boyfriend would be, you know, just livid with me if we didn't talk about <laughs> the furball. Oh, furball is so much fun. Yeah. Oh, we're looking forward to it. It's, it's our big gala every year. Mm -hmm. And actually it was on hiatus for a while, but this is, I think, our fourth or fifth year back mm -hmm. so we love it we've had everything from really fun like 70s with the awesome band and this year is going to be pretty amazing it's going to be a um, like classic Vegas type awesome so it'll, it'll be a lot of fun but it's coming up later this year and actually we haven't even gotten the save the date cards out yet so everybody stay tuned okay cool <laughs> we can't wait we can't wait Talk to me, Maura, a little bit about who is the perfect parent for an adoptable pet. Because I sure. know there's a big difference between rescuing or adopting a pet and going to a breeder or a puppy mill, which, of course, you know, I know personally I highly advocate rescuing an animal because there are plenty out there. Definitely. Um, I, I totally agree. You know, there are great breeders out there and breeders who are interested in the actual breed, not just making a profit. That's not what it's about. So absolutely, please, if you're considering adopting, do adopt from your, your local shelter. Um, just to give you a statistic that I usually like to talk about, this is how bad the pet overpopulation problem is. The only way that every dog and cat in this country would have a home is that if every man, woman, and child, and I'm talking from zero to 75 years old, would adopt seven pets each day every single day for the rest of their lives. Wow. That's how huge it is. So it's so important to adopt from a shelter it's so important to spay and neuter. I, I can't emphasize that enough. But the perfect parent for an adoptive pet is somebody who is looking for that companionship. That uh, pets are family members. Mm. They're our brothers and sisters and uh, and kids. And they, uh, yeah. So someone who's who's looking for the companionship, who is ready for the commitment. Um, a, a pet is a 10, 15, sometimes even 20 year commitment that uh, there's, you, you know, going in that there's going to be a certain amount of veterinary costs and grooming. And um, like you said, yeah, that they, they love treats just like we do. So mm -hmm. good food and all of that good stuff. Well, that's and the, the reward perfect, is just huge. The perfect segue into, you know, what are things that people should consider when they're thinking about mm -hmm. adopting a pet? Because it, it is a huge responsibility. Yes. You know? Absolutely. Well, people, I think, should also consider their, their level of activity in their lifestyle. Do they live in a house or an apartment? Do they have a lot of room or a little bit of room? Are they active? Or do they prefer a couch potato? I prefer a couch potato, personally. Um, I have a couch potato dog, so I appreciate it. <laughs> but um, also consider, you know, are you going to be out there walking? Are you going to just be hanging out? Are you going to be... Um, um, are you are you ready for that? And and are you ready for the joy that pets bring every minute of every day? But then also, their lives are all too short. And so you, to me, you kind of have to be ready from the beginning to know that every moment that you have with them is precious. Yeah, it really surprised me when I was with Dr. Bishop Housen, and he said, 
um, you know, Philip, an average cocker, you know, lives like, you know, maybe eight to 12 years. Mm-hmm. And he goes, Amanda's almost 14. <laughs> and I was oh, like, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You know, I got my, you know, I totally got, you know, I mean, if she had a warranty, she would have like a five star, <laughs> you know, I mean, she, I totally got my years out of her. Right, exactly. Yeah. Gosh, the Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, what is the process? How do people sure. go about adopting a pet? I know y'all have a fabulous new facility right around the corner from my house. Oh, thank you. Yes, we're gearing up for it, actually. We're, it sh- we, we're hoping to open that facility within the next 18 months. We're really hopeful. We're finishing mm-hmm. up our capital campaign. But our shelter that's over on the old uh, Industrial Boulevard, which, mm-hmm. of course, mm-hmm. is not Riverfront right. in Dallas, um, is it's been around since Forever. the early 70s. And right. it's literally falling apart. It's right. falling in half. Right. And so um, we're actually, we got the notice a few years ago that the city was going to, uh, or the, the state was going to make us move. So we're excited for this new shelter. But, uh, but yeah, people can, what they can do to adopt is they can, they can go to our website. Actually, we have all of our adoptable pets on our website. And even if we don't have a photo or a description yet, we're working on it. We have staff who, who's working on that. But um, people can go see, even if it's just, I'm looking for a, a, a lab, adult lab. Mm-hmm. And you can go on the website and see that. Then you can come out to one of either of our two shelters. We have one in Dallas, one in McKinney. And just look around. And we invite people to stay, be take all the time they need, come out as many days as they want. We're open noon to six every day and both shelters and so we also invite people to bring any current dogs that they have as long as they're current on vaccinations we want people to bring those dogs in so that a current can dog pick. can meet exactly Actually, amanda helped me pick out andrew oh good so yeah we took her <laughs> with us and you know i i have to tell you your website is fabulous because you. you know when i was waiting to talk to you the other day it said visit our website at and i did and i was like immediately you know and i love the fact that i could see the pictures and details about the animals and it just Thank was you. You, know, you made it so easy and of course so Thank tempting you. i was like and i was like okay no 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 we oh, need to back up you know it is so important to wait until you're ready mm-hmm. that is just so incredibly important well you know mm-hmm. i've got good connections so yes. i'm not real worried about um, how much oh, yeah. do, how much does it sure. cost to adopt a pet sure that can range anywhere from fifty dollars to two hundred and eighty five dollars mm-hmm. and that depends on the age of the pet how long the pet's been with us uh Older pets have a slightly reduced adoption fee. Cats are slightly less than dogs. Puppies are slightly more. So it's it's just it's a whole scale. I do want to touch on though the 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 animals that uh, their adoption fee is fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. That we call them our VIPs. They're very important pets, and those are little guys who've been in the shelter waiting for a home for thirty days or more. Or sometimes they're just they have another special circumstance. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes we'll have a dog who comes to us very injured and we've had to amputate a leg. So sometimes that dog is going to be a VIP. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and the wonderful thing about this, even with the fifty dollars to two hundred and eighty five dollars, everything that's included in an adoption, it's incredible. It's the spay neuter surgery, the chipping, microchipping, shots, right. um, deworming. Um, we make sure that they do not have any fleas, which that's a big deal too. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a 30-day pet health insurance that comes with the adoption. I love that. I it's wonderful. I thought that was great when I saw it on the website. I was like, oh, this rocks. Yes. Well, yeah. And there's we also have one um, veterinary checkup that we will that is just it's part of the adoption. It's a 14-day health guarantee. 